The episode opens up with Tagashi grumbling over Ishido's poor football skills, while the latter struggles in understanding the concept. Frustrated with Tagashi's strict teaching methods, Ashido yells at him, but the former mentions that he needs to fix Ashido's glaring bad habits. Since Tagashi instructs only verbally, Ashido shouts at him to show how to do it practically. When Tagashi kicks the ball once, Ashido, being a quick learner, analyzes his technique and understands what he needs to do. In the meantime, Tagashi talks about his past experiences when he was edgy, but was motivated when trained by Tatsuya years ago. He recalls a time in his fifth grade when he went to the National Center for the first time. There, everyone knew about his bad upbringing, so no one paid any attention to him. While he felt low and lonely, Tatsuya approached him and watched him practice for 15 minutes. Tatsuya was very good at teaching because he knew how to instruct verbally in simple terms so that a young and naive Tagoshi could comprehend and follow them. Just like Ashido, Tagashi was also impatient back then, so Tatsuya asked him to work out on his own so that he'll never forget it. Since then, Tagoshi has been following the advice and practicing it over and over again. Meanwhile, Tachibana and Aisaku arrive at the scene and join Ashido to help him practice. The next day, the coaches instruct the newly selected players about passing drills. To round off the passing drills, the boys will be playing a 4 on 4 minigame, where both teams will play in a diamond formation. The players are not allowed to dribble upfield, whereas long shots and one-on-one -on -one challenges are not allowed. In other words, they must pass their way to the goal. If the players fail to kick the ball, they won't be able to take part in the passing game and must leave the field. Once the 4-on-4 minigame begins, Ashido remembers Tagoshi's instructions. He relaxes to widen his vision and positions himself in such a way that he can pass in any direction. With his analysis, he figures out that since he's right-footed, he'll kick the ball so it stops diagonally to the right. Eventually, he shows everyone the results of his midnight practice. Everyone who looked down on him before is impressed by his vast improvement. A surprised Asari asks Tagoshi what he taught Ashido to make him so good in such a short span of time. Even the head coach acknowledges him and agrees to teach him how to play. Most of all, Tagashi is proud of Ashido that he learned it so quickly. Meanwhile, Akutsu mocks Yuma for getting exhausted after the game. Also, the other players from the A-team discuss how the match could have been better. Yuma is surprised to hear them because despite scoring nine goals, they're still arguing about what went wrong. He realizes that the soccer he's been playing until now isn't good enough. Later that evening, during dinner, Ashido is overexcited about how well he played. Thus, his friends ask him not to let his guard down just because his passing training paid off. His ball skills are still rough and he needs a lot of practice. Asari, who's watching Ashido talk about his game, starts to believe that the latter apparently has something that everyone else is missing. When Ashido smiles at Asari, he gets annoyed and mentions that from the next day they'll train regularly with the A-team. There's a rumor that most new players can't keep up on the first day. Now that Team A and Team B will practice every day together, Tatsuya orders them to play an 11-on-21 match. When Team A plays with 21 members, Team B gets severely defeated. However, when Team B starts to play with 21 members, nothing changes. They still get slaughtered. Although Ashido tries to keep the team together by reminding everyone of the basics, he himself messes up again. After they lose, Ashido's teammates Asari and Kuroda taunt him for not knowing basic skills. While Ashido is upset, the head coach asks him to think about why only Kuroda and Asari got mad at him out of all the 21 players. The following day in his dorm, Ashido ponders why the two boys were angry while Togashi asked him to enjoy his spring break and relax. Since Ashido's friends, Aisaku and Tachibana's families are in Tokyo, they are going back home to enjoy their break. However, Ashido can't go because he's from Ahime, which is far away from Tokyo. Before leaving, Togashi tells him to practice with Akutsu, as he will also stay at the facility. But Ashido gets mad. Back in his dorm, Ashido realizes that he hasn't talked to any of the promoted players since the intra-squad game. He thinks that he might not have been able to do things that others are able to do naturally. Also, he suspects that the others don't see him as part of the team yet. Although he keeps racking his brain around trying to find his mistake, he can't seem to come up with any conclusion. 
lamenting that he hasn't achieved anything in his time at the youth club so far. Ashido decides to spend all day doing basic training again. Just then, Hana arrives at his door and asks him to visit the high school. However, Ashido scolds her for barging into his room unannounced. Later, when Isaku is returning to his dorm to get his perfume that he forgot to pack, he is surprised to see Ashido and Hana together. While Ashido walks his bicycle, Hana sits on the back seat and tries to talk to him, but he ignores her. Hence, she tickles him and causes him to lose his balance. This leads both of them to fall off the bicycle. Afterwards, Hana gives another meal plan to make him physically strong. Meanwhile, Isaku spies on them from a corner, envying Ashido for being with a cute girl. In the next scene, while Hana has an ice cream, she mentions that she wants to be a doctor in sports medicine in the future. She further reveals that in order to fulfill her dreams, she takes extra English classes every day and works hard. Suddenly, Ashido remembers the head coach who had asked him to find out why two of his teammates were mad at him. He thinks he has to train now, get better as fast as possible and integrate into the team. As he tries to leave, Hana explains to him that just training blindly won't make him any better. She worries about him whenever she sees him being hard on himself. Despite Hana's concern, an ungrateful Ashido yells at her and asks her to stop making meal plans from now onwards. He believes people will get the wrong idea if a beautiful girl like her gives him special attention. Furthermore, he claims to know what's best for him, so he doesn't want her to bother him. Whatever he can't do, he wants to practice and master it, as he is far behind the youth team's level. He asks Hana to let him practice and not to distract him. Saddened and angry by his words, Hana kicks him and rides away on her bicycle. After the spring break, the players return and it's their first day of high school. Inside the classroom, Yuma is surprised to see Kato, as he was expecting her to go to a better high school since she was a very smart girl. However, she explains that if she wants to end up working in her chosen profession, she should attend the same school as the players. Afterwards, when Isaku asks how Yuma is so close to the sponsor's daughter, Kato, he reveals that his mother has been working as a cleaner at Kato's house, so he has known her since they were small kids. In the meantime, Ashido confronts Karuto and Asari, saying he can't understand what the other players are thinking as long as they tell him. Also, he now understands why he can't get along, so he makes an outline of the match on the blackboard to show what he was thinking during the 11 on 21 match that made the boys mad. He concludes that because he was reckless during the match, he failed to gain his teammates trust, but assures to make it up to them and play in unison. Elsewhere, Tatsuya and the head coach discuss that it might take a while for the first year students to get along. There's a difference between them because the promoted players are conscientious while Ashido and the others are more relaxed. Back in the classroom, Ashido still talks about the previous match and the ways they could have played so that he could have scored. Suddenly, Asari gets infuriated and tells Ashido to stop obsessing over being the scorer. However, Ashido tells him that being a forward, he must always think about scoring. Soon, their conversation turns into a heated argument. When Asari berates Ashido, saying he shouldn't have been selected, Isaku speaks in favor of Ashido. Then the boys quarrel and a fight ensues. Later, while returning to his dorm, Ashido runs into the head coach, who tells him that he will play as a starter in the next match. However, he must make a play that proves he's been able to figure out his teammate's rage. If he is not able to do that, the head coach will not field him in the match for the next three months. In the following scene, before the first official game for B-Team, the two promoted players ask Ashido and Asari and other team members to improve their their behavior towards each other. If they fail to do so, they will easily lose against their opponents, despite them being pretty weak. Later, Ashido talks to Tatsuya, who explains to him that in soccer, a player can't do anything by himself. However, an arrogant Ashido replies that he'll win the match by scoring multiple goals all alone. Soon, the match starts and the B team can't perform well in the first half. During the break, one of the promoted players yells at the boys for making careless errors and giving up three goals. While he yells at the boys, Ashido is lost in his own thoughts about what the head coach said. He still has no idea why Asari and Karuto are mad at him, and fears they will lose if they don't work together. In the meantime, the promoted player asks the head coach to switch Ashido, Karuto, and Asari with the second or third year students, or else they will lose the match. When the coach assigns Togashi to a different position, the promoted players are disappointed. Togashi and the promoted players start to argue, until Ashido interrupts and admits that everyone is giving their individual effort. However, what they require in the match
match is a team effort. After the second half begins, Ashido realizes that he, Karudo, and Asari were on the same line during the previous match. So, he reminds Asari that despite being a defender, he came back from the front of the goal, ending up always behind him. Also, he figures out that Karudo is always positioning himself to be in between him and Asari. Now, Ashido realizes that he was the one who didn't make eye contact during the play. Meanwhile, the assistant coach suggests that the head coach switch the players, but the latter insists on waiting. He believes that he is going to see something exciting soon. As expected by the head coach, the match starts to get interesting when Ashido, Asari, and Karudo play with constant eye-to-eye -eye communication with each other. In sports like soccer, where situations can change in a second, a player rarely has time to bark out instructions, so the most effective method is to play with eye contact. Despite having many defenses in the opposing team, Ashido manages to take the ball near the goalpost and passes it to Asari, who finally scores. Eventually, Ashido realizes that soccer is not a game of playing individually, but collectively. No matter how strong the defense is, when players who share the same mind go at it, there's a sure to be a gap. While Ashido ponders all these things, he also scores a goal. Meanwhile, the head coach, who has been keenly observing the match, tells his assistant that the fundamental shape in soccer is the triangle. It takes at least three players to do anything. Realizing the possibility of losing to the youth team, the opposing team extends the time by faking an injury. When Togoshi quarrels with them, he gets a yellow card. Later, Ashido, Asari, and Karudo discuss their previous 11-on-21 match. Turns out Asari and Karudo were trying to form a triangle with Ashido, but he was so obsessed with scoring himself, he didn't even look at them. Now that he has realized his mistake, Ashido thanks the two boys for teaching him how to play real soccer. Asari is nevertheless surprised about how Ashido learned the skill so quickly. Soon, the match continues and Ashido rebuilds the triangle concept and passes the ball to Isaku, who scores the third goal for the team. Now both teams are tied on three goals each. However, Ashido feels weird because he could envision what the players will do next. Meanwhile, Hana, Yuma, and Kaido praise Ashido for making a dummy run across the field as if the final pass from Asari was going to him, but he lured the opposing team towards him to clear the path for Isaku's shot. On top of that, Ashido guided Asari in order to draw his attention to Isaku and pointed towards him. Yuma and Kaido remembered staying behind in the classroom and watching Ashido's drawing that included the position of all the players in the 11-on-21 match. They were shocked to see how fast Ashido is progressing. Although he lacks basic skills, once he learns, he masters it because of his extraordinary instinctual ability. Kaido points out that Ashido is able to predict the moves of the other players. No matter how poor his skills are, Yuma admits that he has always been excited for Ashido since the tryouts. In the last few minutes of the match, Ashido seems low until he sees Hana, who apologizes for kicking him and asks him to give his best. Suddenly, there's an instant change in Ashido's mood and he gets charged up. He communicates with his teammates and uses his eagle eye analysis to score again. With this, his team wins the match. Later that evening, the dorm manager announces a victory celebration party in the dorm. As everything has gone well, Asari apologizes to Ashido for being rude to him. Not only that, every team member shakes hands with each other for their new beginnings and friendship. Meanwhile, everyone watches Kuribayashi on TV while he makes his debut on the J1 stage. While Ashido is eagerly watching the TV, Kaido tells him to do some image training by following Kuribayashi's movements. She asks him to picture in his mind what he'd be doing if he was in Kuribayashi's place out on the field. She requests him to describe it to her. The episode ends as Ashido becomes astounded with whatever Kaido said.